your time now. Uh, being 35, you've been in this sport for a long time. Why do you think that this is your time now? Why has it taken until 35 to get here? You know, I've been asked that question a lot. Um, I guess uh, I'm a late bloomer. Uh, I'll take that, though. Um, I'm healthy. I'm, as, I'm healthier now than I, you know, I ever have been. I think I'll, uh, due to my fighting style, I don't, I don't really get into a lot of, uh, you know, uh, rock 'em sock 'em robot type fights, you know. So and I'm, I don't have a lot of years, if you will, on me because of that reason. Um, you know, I, I can't can't give you a, an answer why, but uh, I can give you an answer that I am I'm, I'm going to be in hell to deal with now at 35. And Rory said that he, you know, he doesn't really pay attention to the guys that he's fighting or look at paper them or something of that nature. Um, is that a mistake in your opinion? Uh, what he thinks doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, when, when we get in there and we start, you know, finding that rhythm of the fight, you know, he'll he'll find he won't be able to hang with my rhythm. So uh, that's it. Can you kind of give your impressions of his overall development as a fighter? He's obviously impressed a lot of people so far. He's definitely an impressive fighter, no doubt about that. Um, I'm, I'm in the UFC. We're both in the UFC. We're fighting in the UFC Saturday night. Both of us are going to be tough, no doubt about it. There's no slackers in UFC. Um, you're always tested when you're fighting anyone in UFC, whether it's their first fight in UFC or if it's their tenth fight in UFC. You're always going to be tested, and I'm very look, I look I look forward to this test. I, I'm really anxious about it. It's a great matchup. He's got skills. I got skills. Let's put it together and let's make a show. Uh, you were so excited and, and ready for your last fight against Anderson. Uh, didn't turn out the way you want to, obviously. Can you talk about putting that fight behind you and uh, preparing to move on? Yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note, and today is cash on here. I'm in Philly. I'm so excited. I train so hard. I feel like I evolved so much. I was part of the sport in the past. I'm part of the present. And I'll make sure I'll be part of the future. So my job is to fight. I'll bring Saturday a very tough fight. Victor, uh, Wagner Vargas, Correio Brasiliense Brasil. Uh, do you think beating Akiyama guarantees you a ticket to another title shot? La, uh, the question was if I beat Akiyama, if I get me the tickets to the to the to fight for the title. So uh, I think I think in the present, it's the future is belongs to Dana and in Joe Silva. And my my present is now. I have to overcome Yakiyama. So that's what I, the only things on my mind right now. Hey Dana, notice that you've been doing a really good job of doing old school and new school every every event, and it's really uh, refreshing for the old school guys. They've been watching since the beginning of UFC. This is new talent coming up, plus the superstar legends from the past. Is this something that you're trying to do every time? It seems like you're getting some really great old school guys and then bringing that up, other talent right up behind it. Not really. The old school guys are still around, so <laughs> the new guys got to beat them, you know. Uh, you know, but when you look at, at the old at the old guard, uh, you know, the only two that are still around really are uh, Tito and then uh, Matt Hughes is going to fight here soon. You know, the, the rest are all starting to retire. And Vitor, yeah. Yeah. I keep forgetting how long Vitor's been around. That's true. Vitor's here too. Yeah, true. Sorry, Vitor. I just don't think of you as old as Tito. Sorry, Dan, this is not event-related, but I had to ask. It's a big story in Canada. It's apparently going across all the different MMA websites. Uh, your good buddy there, Chad Ochocinco uh, and Tito, you've seen uh, some stuff with him on Twitter. Uh, just took a shot at a bunch of Canadians, especially George St. Pierre. Have you guys heard what he said? Who did, Ochocinco? Ochocinco. Yeah, this is a tough one for me because he's going to the Patriots, and I'm a Patriots fan, man. Yeah. But he talks so much shit, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, yeah, he's crazy. I, I don't know if he's just out there trying to get, you know, get some more followers or what. Or if he's really that nuts, yeah. Chad, Chad, I guess you know when football. you're famous, huh? Yeah, you need to stick to football. 
He, took, he takes shots at you all the time, too, and he yeah, just took a shot at George St. Pierre at all of Canada, so. Well, I, yeah. Anderson Silva, too. I, I get to give a lot of thanks to Dana for putting us on the map, you know, uh, for guys like that who are in the NFL and then take a shot at the UFC fighters they want to make a name off of us. Let it be. Um, until he steps in the cage with us, or even in the, my gym at Punisher Training Center. Let's see how big his mouth is then. And Rory, uh, not sure if you heard, but he did take a shot at George St. Pierre, saying he, there's no way he could lose to a Canadian. <laughs> you, you train with George. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, I don't really know Chad Ojosinko, but uh, I, I know he beat up that hockey player, uh, George LaRock, in the gym. So I don't know. He's already taken one professional athlete down. What did he do? Uh, he wrestled with George LaRock. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 GSP did. GSP did. Oh, okay, okay, okay. GSP did. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, for Mike again, Mike, uh, you alluded earlier to you made some changes after the Allen Burger loss a few years ago. Can, can you kind of go over what, what were some of the most significant things you changed? Uh, one, of, one of the most uh, significant things was uh, my diet. I brought on Mike Dolce with Dolce Diet, and uh, that changed uh, uh, a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of things for me, and also mentally. Uh, you know, there's certain pressures that come with being in the big show, which is which is UFC. Um, I kind of just was coasting through some of the other uh, talent that was in the other organizations, and not really buckling down and really, you know, finding what's important to me. And uh, you know, I got woke up when I when I came to UFC. It was it was it was a wake up call, and uh, it's either get serious or I don't know, go back to being a machinist. I'm not going to be a machinist again. Uh, Vitor, can you tell me how many fighters have you fought uh, with the style of uh, Mr. Akiyama? I think I fought uh, one of the best wrestlers before. Like uh, you know, and a guy like him, he he can punch and he can take a he can take a, a fight. So he's gonna be a perfect match for me. You know, it's gonna be a fight. I'm ready. I'm really more into what I can do. So I'm focusing on my talents and the gifts and the calling that God gave me and I'm gonna make sure I use on Saturday. Uh, what is your favorite submission hole? Mm, maybe a toe hole? <laughs> I don't know, it's just whatever's in front of me. I, I, don't, I don't have a favorite. I don't, I, I, you know, UFC you have to be ready for everything. You have to be ready for whatever's in front of you, you have to make sure you, you be ready for it. To, to get it. <clears throat> for Rory, over here to your left. Uh, can you talk about what, what uh, your win at UFC 129 did for your confidence? Because obviously you had to sit on the sidelines for a long time after the Condit loss. Huge fight, 55,000 in your home country, and, and how you felt after, and if you felt like you almost got a monkey off your back by getting back on the winning track. Yeah, I had some Talking, I'll come on. Yeah, I had some uh, ring rust uh, coming off the loss too. Uh, you know, my confidence was shook a little bit, and I had a lot of nerves going into that fight. But uh, I, I felt after that fight, like I, I, I relieved that pressure that I set on myself. After losing. So my confidence is back up, better than ever. Or maybe the mic won't come back on. Did you hear him? I did. Yeah. I wanted to ask a follow up as well. Um, at TriStar, you're around GSP and Faraz and those guys who've been around the sport for a long time. What have they told you about? Not you know now that you're back on the winning track and of course there is a lot of uh, buzz surrounding you about not you know looking into that too much and, and believing in it and, and just focusing on fight to fight. Yeah, I mean uh, I just work on the stuff that that, that Faraz is teaching me in the gym. You know I'm keeping a level head on my shoulders and just just being myself. You know and, and, and when I get in the cage I, I just I use the techniques that I practice and it's easy as that. And just one for Mike. Uh, do you see any similarities between this fight and your UFC, um, what was it, uh, 120 fight against John Hathaway? Hathaway, you know, was fighting in his home country. We're obviously not here, but it seems as though it's kind of a similar situation. And, and I wonder, I'm wondering if you see any similarities between that fight and this fight. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, some very subtle things, you know. Um, you know, a young guy, you know, coming up in the sport and and trying to make a name for himself in UFC backing them and, and, and building them. Um, it's kind of kind of the same, but two totally different fighters, you know, uh, two totally different styles. I don't I don't think about that at all. 
I think about what dangers that uh, McDonald uh, is going to pose and how to deal with them. So that, that's. But I, I still plan on doing the same thing that I did at UFC 120. This question over here when you left for Tito and Rashad, you know, it, it, I'll start with you, Tito, after you victory against, uh, you lost victory. Um, how much of your decision had to do with the fact that you still had that little thing in your chest about the tie that you guys had before? I mean, kind of like a rematch or something to get off your shoulder, you have you moved, up, moved on from that? I moved on from that 100%. I'm a totally different person, a different fighter. Um, you know, I, I look at that one as uh, a learning experience. Um, on both of our parts, I think. You know, I think Rashad learned a lot from it. I learned a lot from it. Um, you know, um, I felt how strong Rashad was. You know, he said he was a puppy, and now he's a big dog. Um, we'll see on Saturday. Yeah. How about you, Rashad? I know, you know, the three three changes in opponent. Once it came down to Tito, did that, did that cross your mind, at least just to... Uh, no, not really. You know, and I was, uh, I was just like, I was happy that he just took the fight, to be honest. Um, you know, because when you have fights canceled like that, you never know what's going to happen. And I've been out of cage so long, I wouldn't fought anybody. So it really didn't matter. But uh, the fact that he stepped up, it, it was it was kind of cool. You know, I had to kind of rekindle those old feelings of uh, what happened in a draw. But for the most part, I, I moved on from that. It, it feels like a, a long time ago. You know, four years, a lot changes in four years. And I've changed the type of person that I am. And I changed the kind of fighter that I am. And there's been so many changes in my life since then. So uh, on Saturday, Tito's going to feel somebody he's never felt before. You know, I mean, I'm not the same fighter. And if he's assuming that I am, then he's going to be in trouble. Tito, if we can just talk about uh, the emotional mindset before the, uh, the Bader fight and then the emotional mindset heading into the Rashad Evans fight. I mean, that was about that... Let's be honest, you, you, your emotions going into that were high because you're fighting for your career. It's almost like you're back on track. Now you're fighting potentially for a title shot. Can you talk about the two different mindsets leading in to these two fights? Well, you kind of got to see me before the fight, before the Bader fight. I was so focused, man. I was just very positive in everything I did, my outlooks, uh, being healthy, I think, uh, you know, personal stuff at home. Um, I was able to, to battle through these things. You know, I have a great camp, you know, working with Jason Perillo, um, getting my hands focused and strong and powerful, working with uh, Ricardo Abreu with my wrestling and jiu-jitsu and some other guys that I spar with and wrestle with. And, of course, Mike Giovanni getting my cardio. Like, I haven't been here in a long time. I've been pressed for six, five-minute rounds every round, every minute, as hard as possible in a long, long time because I was too afraid to injure myself with my back and my neck uh, prior. And now that I have it and... Um, I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. It just makes me that much more focused, you know. Um, and now that I'm here against Rashad, you know, Dana gave me a call um, a week after my event was done with Vader. Um, it was just such an emotion, emotional high for me that I was like, God, I kind of want to indulge in this glory. And Dana's like, man, we, we kind of need you right now. Can you can help us out? And I was like, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't want to do it. But off the bat, my first instinct was saying, no, I want to take the summer off. I want to deal with my stuff, my personal stuff at home. You know, my training uh, center, punishment training center, my clothing, how to punish my athletics, my new um, supplement line, punishment nutrition I just came out with. I really want to focus on the business stuff. But Dana was like, can you? And I was like, give me a day to think about it. A couple days later, he calls me back and goes, what do you think? I was like, give me a day to think about it. I thought about that night, people tweeted about it. Me and my trainer partner, my coaches, we talked about it. I called them back and I said, Dana, let's do this. I was against Rashad, like I say, man, he's, he's a great opponent, he's a former world champion. Really, really tough, but at the same time, my mind focus is just so positive and so healthy. And I didn't get touched in the Vader fight. My wrestling's on par, my, rest, or my sparring's been on par, my boxing skills, my cardio, everything's been great. I haven't felt this healthy since I lost a tour. I've been battling so much with mental stuff. I mean, I talked to Dan, I was like, man, I gotta deal with stuff at home. And I was also going to deal with. I've been away with this last camp for a beta fight and I can deal with stuff at home. And he understood. He goes, I understand that. But I kind of just put it on hold and say, you know what, let's, let's, let's get this fight over with. Three weeks. I trained for two and a half weeks for this fight, but thank God Mike got me ready to, to compete. You know, I uh, I'm ready to go six fives, man. And uh, I'm strong, I'm healthy, you know, my weight is where I wanted to be, so on Saturday night when I come in. I'm going to try to do what I did on July 2nd. You can lean, Paul. You can lean.